What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we'll style our ad post page for our blog with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna style our ad post page, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we left off last time. We have created this uh, ad post page. We can add a blog post, but the styling on this thing is not great. And since we're generating this form automatically, it becomes kind of tricky. How do we style the form? There's not like the regular form fields that we can add CSS classes to. So what do we do? Well, that's what we're gonna look at in this video, and it's not that bad. So if we come back here and look at our ad post page, you'll remember, we're just using this tag right here, this form as P. And this is kind of interesting here. We're doing this as P. Uh, this is like a P tag, a PHTML tag. That means every field in our form will be surrounded in its own P, right? Uh, you can also do as uh, UL. If we save this, hit reload, boom, now it's an unordered list, right? You see these dots next to everything. And you can also do as table. And this will create a, an actual table. Now, if we save this and run it, this is gonna look a little weird. Everything's kind of stretched out because we need a table tag. So we could come up here and just, you know, create a table like this, and then come down here and close our table tag like that. If we save this, come back here, now it looks a little bit better, but this thing is below, so we would have to tweak that as well. And it's just a little weird. Now this is better looking if you just want to do the table thing, right? We could grab this button, for instance, and put it down here. If we save this, this would probably look a little bit better. Yeah, so this is better, but it's still not great. We're still not getting any style here. So let's go ahead and change this back. Uh, let's get rid of all of that, and that, and let's change this back to as P save this and check this again. Okay, so this is the way it is. So in order to style this, we actually have to create a Django form and then sort of uh, use that form on this page. And to do that, we need a forms.py file. So if we head back over to our code. You'll notice we've got it. Let's see. Here's our blog, the blog app, right? We've got views, we've got URLs, we don't have any forms, we've got models.py. We don't have any forms. So we could just come up here to the blog, right click and create a new file. And let's just go file, save as. We wanna call this forms.py, right? And here we want to import some things. We wanna go from Django, import forms. And we also wanna import our model so that we can use our model. So from dot models, import host. And that's just this models file right here, dot models is the same as models.py. And this post is our post that we've created, our post model, right? So we're just importing that. So, okay, now we need to create a class and let's just call it, you can call it anything you want. I'm gonna call it post form, right? And this inherits forms.model form. And a model form allows us to create form fields for our model, in this case, our post model, right? So, okay, that's that. Now we wanna create another class inside of this called meta. And inside of here, we want to designate uh, what model we wanna use. We wanna use our post model, right? And then what fields do we wanna have on this form? Well, these are just gonna be the fields from our models.py. So title, title tag, author, and body. So we could just put those in here. So title title underscore tag and put these all in quotation marks, right? Separate them by commas. And this is just a Python list. Uh, what was the other one? Author and then body, right? Okay, so we sort of defined our, our fields and our form. Now we need to actually do the thing we wanna do, add the actual styling and stuff. And to do that, we create this widget uh, dictionary, right? And inside of here, we just, designate what we want. So for each of these forms, or for each of these fields, we'll just go, for instance, title, Q 
key value pairs of a dictionary are separated with colon. And then here we just do what we want to do. So we want to call forms dot text input. And that's because uh, let's head back here. This title, for instance, is a text input field box, right? So we, we want to say, hey, we want to do something to this text input box, right? What do we want to do? Well, we need to change the attributes of that box. So we can call adders and set that equal to inside of here, another dictionary. And now we can just say what we want to do. So we want to create a class inside of this text input box, right? And what do we want in that class? We want to pass some CSS called form dash control, right? And then comma to separate the uh, the next one. So I'm just going to copy this and and do this four times because we have four fields two, three, four, and we're going to need to tweak each of these. But before we do that, I want to talk about this form control thing. So what is that? Where am I getting that? Well, you know, we've been using bootstrap for all of our stuff. So if we go to getbootstrap.com and click on the documentation, come down here to components and then click on forms, we can see bootstrap has some forms. And they look like this, they're nice, they glow, uh, they, they stretch across, they're sized nicely and all that good stuff, right? So to use these, we wrap our entire thing in a form group div, and then for each item, for instance, each text input box or whatever, we give it a class of, let's see, where is it at in here? Uh, right here, form control. So each item will have to have a class of form control in order to sort of bootstrapify them, right? And we can grab this div class form group and we just want to wrap this guy probably in our entire entire form. So we can head back to our add post.html and then just right above this form, let's just put that div class in and I'll go ahead and tab that over just to make things look nice. And then we can close that div right here. Okay, so that should work. Okay, so back to our forms.py file, we need to tweak each of these things. So first off, let's go, uh, let's change the names of these. So title tag is one. And author is the next one. And finally, body. Now the title tag is going to stay the same, because it's a text input box, right? If we come back to our website and look at it, these two things are text input boxes. This is a select drop down box. And this is a text area box, right? So we need to put different things for these two things, different things for these two things this is the technical term different things, right? So for instance, here, we put text input box, like I said, for title tag, it will stay text input box. But for author, that's a select drop down box. So we call select, right? And then this body is a big square box. And that is a text area. So change this to area. Now notice the area is lowercase, like here, the, the input was uppercase. So text input two different words, both uppercase, for some reason here, we just call lowercase area. Okay, and the rest of these things can stay the same, we want form controls for each of them. That's the class we're going to pass the CSS class. Now, if you're not using bootstrap, and you have some other CSS that you're just writing, for instance, if you have a static directory, if you know how to use static files with Django, which if you don't check all my other playlists, the uh, dental website with Django playlist, I go over creating static files in great detail. Static files are CSS files, JavaScript files and image files. So if you have your own CSS file that you're writing, you would use the static directory for that. And you could still pass whatever class you wanted right in here, calling it whatever you wanted. But we don't have to worry about that. We're using bootstrap. It's very easy. So we're just going to call form control for each of these. So okay, let's look over this again, post, uh, post form is the name of our form. Um, our model is post and okay, that's looking good. So go ahead and save this. Now we also need to make some changes to our views.py file. So let's pull that up. There we go. And up here at the top, we're importing our model, we also now need to import that form we just created. So dot or so from dot forms, because the name of the file is forms.py. So we can call it by calling dot forms. And we want to import that form we just created. So that was post form. That's what we called it. So we just copy this. And where'd we go? Here it is, paste that right in. So okay, now we need to make a change down here to our add post view as well. We need to 
tell this, you know, here we're telling it use our post model, but we also need to tell it use the post form. So to do that, we call form class underscore class and set that equal to whatever we called this thing. So I can just copy this and paste that right here. Now we're using our post form. Remember when we first created this thing, we designated what fields we want to use and we designated using all of them. We want to use all our fields. And if we don't want to use them all, we can break them apart. And for instance, if we just want the title and the body, we can do it like this. Well, we don't want to use any of these now because we're using this post form, right? It takes care of everything for us. So we need to take this line out. I'm just going to comment it to, uh, to make it go away. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and let's head back over to our website. And it's Friday, so I almost certainly forgot something. And that seemed pretty easy. Uh, we're sailing right along. So let's hit reload to see if I screwed this up. And it looks like I did. Yep. So what did I do? All right, let's pull up our thing here. Control C to break out of here. And let's see name form is not defined on line 10 of what forms.py. Okay, so we've got a typo in our form class. So let's head back over to our forms.py. Oh, right here widgets. Plural. Obviously, I have more than one, so this is widgets. So let's go ahead and save this. Oh, okay. So here, forms. Whew. It is absolutely Friday here in Vegas. You can tell. <laughs> All right. So save this. Now ah, let's come back. That ought to do it. Let's run this guy. Hit reload. Boom. There we go. We've got a nice styled form. Now this is big. It's taking up the whole screen. Now with a little bit of bootstrap, we can change this to anything we want, you know, but this is the, this is the important thing. This is the hard thing, getting these things to be bootstrapified. Now that they're bootstrapified, we can wrap these in divs to make it, you know, smaller. We can do change the background color. We can do anything we want and we can just do that just in our HTML on our ad position. So for instance, if we wanted to just wrap all of this stuff in a div, uh, with a class equals whatever, we could do that and then it would just, you know, make it smaller. So I'm just, I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now because I, I like it being that big. And here we see this that works. So let's try this out. Let's say uh, uh, styled blog post. Uh, let's go bootstrap CSS <laughs> author admin. This is a post where the form was styled with bootstrap. All right, so let's post this. Boom, here it is, styled blog with post. And it looks like it worked. So we can pass not just the class. For instance, if we wanted to pass a placeholder text that appears inside of this box, right? We could do that too. And so we would just come back to our forms.py and let's say the title tag, just come up here inside of this adders, this is a, a, a Python dictionary, you can put as many items in a dictionary as you want, just separate them with commas. So we can also go a uh, placeholder. Any normal thing that you would put in a input box. So you can put in here. So uh, this is title placeholder stuff, <laughs> right? So if we save this, come back here and hit reload. You see inside of here now it says this is title placeholder stuff. And if we click on it and start typing that disappears because that's what placeholder text does in a form. But uh, yeah, just that easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Because we don't really want that. But very cool. So it's just that easy to style our forms. So again, we just create a forms.py file, import our from, from Django import forms. That's what all of this stuff is. We also want to import our model or post model. Then we just create a, a class, name it anything you want. It's a post form. So I named it post form. It inherits forms.model form. And again, this is from forms right here. That's this thing right here. And model form, there are different forms you can use. We're using a database that has a model. So we want to create form fields for all of our model stuff, right? So we use model form. You can use just, I think there's forms.form. If you don't have a model, you just want to create a form, but uh, doesn't really apply here. So I'm not going to talk about it. And inside of here, we create a class meta and then just designate what our model is post. We imported it right here, set our fields, right? 
and then just create widgets for each of these fields and uh, put your stuff. So pretty simple. And then the only other thing is in our views.py file, remember, we just uh, import form class, set it to the name of that post form. And then up here at the top, we have to from.forms import that form, right? Post form right there. And uh, that's all there is to it. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and uh, not too bad. So that's all for this video. If you like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel, doesn't cost you anything. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best selling coding books. Join over 95,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.